This is the Holger 120N, a cheap plastic medium format camera that takes 120 roll film. Over the last few years the Holger developed quite a following amongst photographers and not just because of its simplicity in use but because of the unique type of pictures the Holger under the right lighting conditions can uh, take. Check out some of my other videos uh, in my channel and you'll see some of the pictures I've taken with my Holgers. In this video I'm going to split it into three sections. The first section is how to improve the quality of the pictures that you get from the Holger from new. The second one is precautions to take so you don't uh, mess up the photographs when you first go out with the Holger. And the third part of the video I'm going to show you some of the accessories that I use on my Holgers to make it a more versatile camera. So let's move into the first part of the video, how to improve picture quality. And by saying improve picture quality, I mean fixing light leaks. Many holders when you buy them from new do have light leaks, which some people like, but for me, I think it degrades the quality of the image. Uh, especially in black and white, lowering the contrast, etc. So when I buy Holgers, there's a certain um, procedure that I go through to stop light actually entering the camera body and degrading the negative, I should say. So the first thing I do, I go into a darkened room and bright torch and I go around all the edges, all the edges with my eye will be close to the back of the camera right up to my eye with the back off and then just look round and light if there's any light getting in you will actually see it with your eye and you know that's the area to fix so on the three holders that I've had or I own light is coming from different areas on the cameras and I suspect that it applies to most holders one of these suspect areas is the shutter button. Light can sometimes get under that crack into the lens assembly and reach the film. So that's something that needs to be addressed. The joint that where you fix the lens to the actual whole body, sometimes light can get down into that and there's two screws on the inside and light can protrude through those holes where the screws are and again reach the film. So that's an area that needs uh, fixing. And the other area for light leaks is the camera back. When you first buy a Holger from new, the red wind is completely clear top to bottom. Um, it can be a problem because if you have that red window open all the time, modern black and white film is quite sensitive even to red light. So there is a chance that light can get in um, and, and affect the film. And not only that, it's not sealed that good around the edges. So, you know, under um, bright light, light can get in and again, it, it can affect the film. The bottom part of the window is for 6x4.5 negatives and the top window is for 6x6. Most people who use the Holger uh, set it to 6x6. That gives you a nice... Uh, large negative to work with and if you want to do you can crop it down to 645 um, so what I do with uh, my holders I tape up this bottom 6 by 4.5 window and that means that when I've taken a shot and then open the slide wind the the uh, film onto the next frame when I close the slide there's no light can possibly get in through that area so it's worth doing, um, it just um, improves the chances of no light getting into that area. Another thing that, not, not so much a light leak, but a, another thing that you can do to improve the quality is when you get the film inserts, this is a 6x6 one, as you can see it's quite shiny, that sheen level is quite high. And when you buy them from new, the actual inside of the camera is the same sheen level and that's not good because when light enters through the lens into this film insert it, and the films across this top part here 
the light can bounce about from the side to side and degrade the quality of the of the negative so what I do is I get some black matte black paint and paint with this type of paint this is chalkboard matte black and I paint the whole inside of the insert and that means when light comes through the lens it's less chance of bouncing about and degrading the quality of the image the the fix for the shutter button you can access that area by undoing a screw which is there and then another screw which is you can just can't see it on the video but it's actually there easy to get to undo those two screws and I'll show you on this other camera this frees up the whole of the lens assembly you can see that mine has no wires attached to the hot shoe for the flash I don't use flash so I just simply cut those off. But if they are attached, you can still pull the lens the lens assembly back. And this is the area here where light can get in. Same side as the shutter button. So what I do in that case, I get some soft foam. I've done, actually done this on this camera, but cut it to the same size as the lens panel. And then glue it to that area. And when it's set, it looks something like that. And I simply put the lens panel back on, screw it tight, and then the shutter still fires as normal. Doesn't affect it. And the other area, that I mentioned, this crack down at the top, and sometimes it can come through this area where the viewfinder is. There's two small screw holes. Light can get through those areas, through those holes, and, and uh, affect the film. So all I've done is actually put some black tape over those screws. Believe me, if you do these um, fix the light leaks, and paint the inside of the film insert matte black, you will see a big improvement in the uh, picture quality. And it's well worth the time it takes. And it doesn't take long. To do these things right we'll move on now to the next part of the video which is precautions that you should take when you first use your holder when you first go out with your holder you'll probably do something like this so you've never used this type of camera with a viewfinder that's not looking through the actual lens like an slr or a DSLR. You'll start taking pictures and then you'll come home and develop the film and all the negatives will be blank, nothing on them, completely clear. And it's because you've left the lens cap on. Uh, when you're looking through that viewfinder, you can't see if the lens cap's on or off. So my advice is, when you first go out of the holger, is always take the lens cap off, only use it for storage, put it in your pocket, and then only put it on when you, when you finish shooting. And that way you're not going to end up with blank frames. So always keep the lens cap in your pocket. The next tip is the back. The back isn't that strong. Uh, the catch is not that strong. It's quite a weak uh, catch really. And there's a slight gap there which concerns me sometimes thinking that light might be able to get through that area. So as a precaution and to kill two birds with one stone you don't want to be going off and taking pictures and then you know you might have taken a whole roll or nine ten pictures and then all of a sudden accidentally knock the catch and the back flies open you ruin most of your pictures to stop that from happening and, and closing that gap what i tend to do is get some this is gorilla tape place it on the back of the camera pull it across tight that does two things do it at the other side it closes this gap and it makes sure that that latch will not open so that that's well worth doing because one day it will catch you out and the back will fly off the other thing where I have been caught out is the the button at the underneath underneath the lens housing it's got a setting for N which means that when you press the shutter it opens and closes 
opens and closes. But when you put it in the B setting, when you press it down once, it opens and it stays open until you let go. Now, I've been out on a couple of occasions where somehow I've knocked that button to the B setting, not being aware of it, come home, develop the negatives, and because I've used it in B, they've all been overexposed. So my advice would be to make sure that the slider is in the end position, and I'll show you on the other ends. Just put some tape across to lock it into the end position with tape, and that means you can't accidentally knock it and um, overexpose the film because you've had it on the B setting accidentally. So if you carry out those precautions, take the lens cap off, make sure the back's taped up and make sure that the slider switch is taped up. You, you will not make any mistakes. Uh, it's only when you first use the Holger and you're not used to it that these uh, mistakes occur. But the best way is to address them first and make sure that it doesn't happen. Right, we'll move on to the third and final part of the video and that's uh, Holger accessories. The first accessory I have for the Holger is the cable release adapter. Now, believe it or not, these adapters now are getting very difficult to uh, get hold of. I bought this from China and a friend of mine was after one of these. I bought this about two years ago and it cost me £10. He was after one of these and he saw one uh, on eBay from a Chinese seller and can you believe they were asking £239. Anyway, obviously he didn't buy them, but he's found somewhere uh, where somebody is uh, 3D printing these and they only cost the same price that I paid. So don't don't pay too much money for them because they're only it's only a cheap plastic plasticky thing and it's certainly not worth um, £239. Anyway, on to how we would use this. Normally you would use this with the uh, the, the the slide switch in the B mode. Because I would use this probably for night photography or long exposures through the day and then clip it on and then simply put the cable release into it and then you can control the amount of exposure that's coming into the camera. Uh, that applies for night photography. Now if you're going to use long exposures throughout the day you're going to need a 46 millimeter filter thread that's no glass in this is a step up ring because i've got 52 millimeter uh, nd filters i have three nd filters at different strengths so this goes from 46 to 52 that screws into the front of the holger lens it's a bit fiddly because it's not a proper uh, thread in the plastic lens on the holger and then i can put on a one of the ND filters, use it in conjunction with the um, cable release adapter and that means that if I say go to the coast and I want to do some uh, longer exposures to blur the water or I want to cloud movement I can control the exposure because I can get the exposures into split seconds by using the ND filters and the camera obviously will be on a tripod and again the cable release set your exposure, press the cable release and release it after the uh, metered time. So that's why you would want one of these uh, for longer exposures in split seconds. A very handy thing to have for a holder. You can also screw in there um, coloured filters such as an orange or yellow filter. And the next accessory that I have is the um, waist level finder. Take the adapter off. That just simply clicks on the top and you have a view looking straight down the camera like you would on the TLR camera. The actual view is circular, not square, and it doesn't show the whole of the frame area, but it does give you an indication of your composition and it does come in handy for low down shots. And again, it's it wasn't an expensive accessory. I picked it up second hand. But it, it does 
it does make the, the Helga a more versatile camera. It's an external viewfinder. This one is the Voigtlander, I think I pronounced it right, Contour 6x6. And it's um, an unusual viewfinder in that you look through it with both eyes open. And when you do that, you see a square frame. Now this is made for square frame and it fits the image size that the Helga actually takes. And that slips onto the viewfinder. So instead of looking through that viewfinder where you get a restricted view, this shows you the whole area and it does aid in composition. I'll try to show it through the, uh, the lens on the video to see if you can get some idea what, what I'm seeing, but it could be difficult this. You can just see the frame lines. So you look within those white lines. That shows you the composition. These aren't uh, cheap. I I I, pay, I got this for a good price. But you know, if you do see one of these going cheap, they're well worth it. And again, they make it so the holder is a lot more enjoyable to use. And again, more versatile. So keep your eye out for the contour. So to finalise the video, for the accessories we've got the cable release adapter we've got the step up ring we've got um, the Voigtlander contour viewfinder and we've got the waist level finder Oops. all these small accessories make a difference and make the Holga a much more versatile camera anyway thank you for watching the video uh, I hope some of the tips I've given you are uh, useful and come in handy and do the, the modifications that I've shown you because as I said before in the video it really does improve the picture quality of this uh, one of my favourite cameras to be honest with you if you have any questions just leave a message below and I'll do my best to answer and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video